Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to take Quexel Megascan assets and download them and use them in Cinema 4D and Octane Render. So I'm going to show both how to use it in Cinema 4D and set that up and how to set it up in Octane because it's so easy to port that over. Now in case you don't know, what Quexel Megascans is, is it is a large library of files provided by Quexel that you can purchase such as 3D scanned textures and 3D scanned actual objects. So full 3D scanned objects. Very, very hyper realistic as you can see here. It's, it's beautiful looking. And what's really cool is if you go to Quexel, or I'm sorry, if you go to just megascans.se, you can click on free right here. And all these objects right here and textures are 100% free for you to use even in commercial work. Just of course you're not allowed to redistribute them and try and sell them individually as an object. Now I do want to point out first that there is two types of objects that you can download from Quexel, even not including just the free. So they're actual paid libraries as well. You have a, just a texture. So here like this grass here, this is a single texture only, no 3D asset. Over here, on the other hand, we have an actual 3D asset plus textures. So I just wanted to point that out. Now that we understand this though, let's scroll all the way to the bottom and let's start by trying to download this very nice 3D scan of a rock right here by selecting that. Here we can see the scale. It is an open mesh, so there's holes in the bottom, but it will look good as long as you only look on the top. So it's just letting you know that. And starting from the very top, let's work our way down. First up, resolution. All this is is just basically the resolution of the texture for your um, materials that you're going to have on it for the, the image textures and such, such as the bump map, normal map, and the color channel. Uh, I'm going to leave this at 4K, but you can pick whichever resolution you'd like. Next up is context, offline rendering and real time. This means it's for rendering videos, something inside of Octane or Cinema 4D, and real time means it's meant for games. So basically what's really happening here is if we set it to real time, it gets rid of the bump map down here so we don't get a bump map, but if we set it to offline rendering, we do get a bump map. Since I do want a bump map, I'm going to set that to offline. Next up is our workflow. Are we a specular or a metalness workflow? Cinema 4D and Octane both run under a specular workflow. So they need specular maps, not a metalness map. So we are gonna choose specular. Depending on your workflow, though, you may change this. And finally, we also have micro surface. This, I believe, is the map that determines how blurry the reflections are on the object if you do have specular going on. Um, Cinema 40 and Octane both run under a roughness, I believe, as well. So we're going to choose that. And we have our mesh format, OBJ or FBX. I'm going to choose FBX. And then we come down to finally our maximum LOD. This is different mesh resolutions of our object. We have no LOD. This is the raw 3D scan all the way down to LOD level 5, which is 561 triangles. Extremely small. Now that we know all this, what we're going to do literally is it doesn't matter which one we select. I'm just going to set this one here, 7,000, because we're going to check on, sometimes it's normally off, we're going to check on high poly. So we're going to get that file with raw 3D scan data. So we have that big one. Plus, we're going to have all LODs checked on. This means we're going to have every single LOD and every resolution of that mesh available to us, all the way from full mesh all the way down to 500 tries. So you may also, I want to point out, have an issue where this doesn't download, what I recommend is just to uncheck and recheck it back on. This way, all those files will download because there is a bug where sometimes you won't get all of those. Next up is brushes. This is pre-built sculpting brushes that were made from this object. Very nice. I, I'd like to recommend keeping that checked on. We have Source Z tool. This is ZBrush tools that you can get. It's very nice to have if you have ZBrush. And then LOD normals. I'm not going to get into too much detail on this, but it's basically you get a different normal map for each level of LOD in the objects that you choose to download. So pretty handy to have that. And finally, we have our each individual texture map that we're downloading right here. And I just like to check on toggle all. So we get all of them. Now that we have done all of this, we are ready to click download. Now, once we start that download, it is going to take some time. It's going to take me about two minutes, maybe a little longer, depending on what your internet speed is. So I actually have that pre-downloaded and it's going to be in your downloads folder. Here is the file that you're going to get and you're going to right click it and click extract all and that will give you this file right here. So let's open it up. 
Now we have a ton of stuff in this folder, but don't worry, we're going to go through each one individually to explain what each one means. First up, all these maps are our color map, our bump map, displacement, fuzz, which lets us decide where we want to grow hair, for example, on our mesh to create um, versions or types of moss on our object, something that visually looks like moss. We also have all our normal maps for each LOD level, as well as a normal bump map that we can put on our object that takes the place of an actual bump map on our high, high resolution model. So basically what this means is if we're going to use LOD level zero, which is the pure 3D scan, no LOD basically, then we want to use our normal bump. But if we're using a LOD type like these ones down here, say we're using like LOD five, we want to use the corresponding normal map for LOD five. Also note, we also have very nice, here's these sculpting brushes that we can, you can, we can use inside of Cinema 4D, pretty handy. And also, there's the ZBrush tools right down here, and an image showing it what this rock can look like if you render it out. Very pretty rock, very nice. And now, let's start using this in Cinema 4D. Let's start constructing this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up Cinema 4D right here, and you can import this any way you'd like, but for me, I'm just going to take the highest resolution model I can get and drag it in right here, and we'll use just the default import geometry, lights, everything can be set to normal. I unchecked animation, and for geometry, I unchecked poses and just left on normals and convert normals to fong tag edge breaks. Of course, we also want to import textures and materials and press OK. It doesn't matter too much because we're going to be setting all this up manually. Now that we got all this set, let's double click our Cinema 4D material that was created and let's start bringing this in. First up, we have color. What this is inside of here is Quexel Megascans refers to this as albedo. That's what color is. So we're going to take this and drag this into our color. Next up, we are going to grab our, um, let's grab our bump map next. Check on bump and we have our bump listed right here drag that one in. Next up, let's check on normal. And remember, because we're using the pure raw 3D scan, we're using high, that means we can use bump. We don't need LOD 1, 0, all the way up to 5. We're just actually going to use the bump one right here. And we have that on. And now, remember too, we also have a very nice roughness and specular map. So we can go to reflectance, check this on, add a Beckman, turn off our specular, and underneath roughness, we're going to twirl this down. We're going to drag in our roughness map. Next, we're going to go to specular strength and, or I'm sorry, reflection strength is what we want to use. Twirl that down and pull in our specular. And that is going to go in right here. I find too that we also want to kind of pull in our specular strength too. Now that I think about it, Cinema 40 is a little interesting how it calculates that. And finally, to wrap all this up, it's going to look a little weird until we take our Fresnel way down here, layer Fresnel, and set this to a dielectric Fresnel of a IOR of 1.45, just to give it a little bit more realistic of a fall off on that. We basically have set this up in Cinema 4D, and I'm not going to render it because we're going to move directly on to Octane and talk about how to set it up for that. So what we're going to do is let us just boot up Octane. It is going to take a moment because it is starting up. So if you ever do have a hang with Octane starting up, it's just because it is booting up now when you move over to Octane, not on the startup of Cinema 4D anymore. So uh, that's interesting how they have changed that. But now that it is up, let's begin setting this up for Octane. What we need to do is let's just first create a material. So we're just going to materials and let's use a glossy material and apply this to our object and delete that old Cinema 4D material. We're going to make this from scratch, even though we could select this material and convert it under here with materials, convert material. But uh, I want to show you the default raw way of setting this up if you weren't going to do that backward way from Cinema. So what we're going to do too quickly, you don't have to follow along with this. I am going to make a floor and I am going to make a object, HDRI environment, select it, go into our image texture because if we just drop the HDRI out here, it wouldn't be read properly. So we have to go into the image texture and then drop that on. So I'm just going to pull up any old HDRI just so we can have something pretty to light our scene. Now that we have that set up, let's go ahead and boot Octane up. I'm going to press render and we are going to be staring at our default kind of blank looking stone here. Nothing too pretty yet, but we will get this up and running. 
first off too, let's change our channel from direct lighting to path tracing, just to make it look a little nicer. We have an unbiased renderer going on now, much prettier. So let's double click our glossy material and let's open up our node editor and close this down. And to begin, let's start dragging in the materials that we're going to need. First up, we are going to need our albedo, just drag and drop. We're going to need our bump. We're going to need possibly a displacement. We may play around with that. And we need our LOD, or sorry, not LOD. We're going to just use normal bump. And finally, if we pull way over here. We can use our roughness. We may mess with this. You can try this if you like. I usually don't use it too much. And we are going to pull in our specular. So now that we have all that done, we are actually good to go and start setting this up. It's literally this easy. So just take our... We're going to lower this down so you guys can see what's going on over here. Let's apply this individually one at a time. Now it's a little messy. But let's take our albedo, plug this into the fuse. Let's take our normal, plug this into normal. Let's take our, what's this, bump. Okay, we're going to take our bump, plug that in as well to the bump channel. And I'm going to try and organize these a little bit. And next up is our roughness. Yes, this is what it is. Take our roughness, plug that into roughness. And over here, this is finally our specular. I recommend organizing these a little nicer than what I'm doing, but this works for the time being. There we go. Everything is relatively organized. A little bit. Could be a little nicer, but that's good enough. Now, right off the bat, this looks pretty decent. This isn't too bad. It's very important to realize, though, that the higher resolution texture you download, the nicer your object's going to look. It's not going to look very nice if you have like a 128 pixel resolution on this guy. Now what we can do to kind of perk it up a bit more is we can actually select our image texture for our normal, for example, and I'm going to crank this up to 100 just to really exaggerate what it does. It creates contrast on the surface, really kind of makes the depths of it deeper and the heights of it look higher. More shadow and more contrast really makes it more punchy. This, of course, is way too high. So let's bring this up to something like 3. And let's take our bump right here, our bump map, and do the same. And it will do the same thing except slightly different. It just makes it a little bit more punchy. Now, one thing I want to point out is I don't think the bump map actually works if you have a normal plugged in. They say it does not but I actually disagree with that. I feel that it does work with a normal map. So uh, that is something I, yeah, I can definitely see a difference with it on and off. So I like a value of say five for my bump and a value of three. We can leave that power of three for our uh, normal map. So that is just adding a little bit more contrast to the surface of the rock. Also, what I'd like to do, select my texture go to index and set this to 1.45. This is a little bit higher than the 1.3 and it adds a little bit more realism in my opinion on the reflection fall off. Because by changing our index, by looking at like kind of an angle of our rock, we're getting a little bit more reflection. See how we're getting the shiny bit than if we just look straight at it? Now, I do want to point out if you're going to look this close, you may want to upgrade to an 8K texture instead of this 4K texture that we're using right here. But um, that said, from a distance, this looks really, really nice. It is very, very clean. Now that we've done that, though, we basically have a pretty decent setup going on here. It looks relatively pretty realistic. Now, for me personally, I do not like to use the roughness or the specular map applied and instead kind of dial that in myself. What's kind of going on here? What I like to do is take my specular and we'll leave that 100 but then we'll take our roughness and we'll just manually punch in a value of like 0.2 just to give it a little bit more kind of realism going on here not too shabby we may roughen this up because it is a rock surface maybe we'll do like 0.5 i think i kind of really like that a little bit better now it that is up to you to decide what really comes down to making this look good in the end, if you want it to be like the image shown here, is you need shadows. You need to set up your scene. You need to have good lighting. This lighting here may not be very flattering to this um, particular object. So that's when I recommend trying different HDRIs out. Or sorry, we don't want to drop it in there. We want to actually select this image texture. And you can go through and try different lighting. But that is the key. Actually, that's really good right off the bat. That looks, that looks pretty realistic. That's, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. 
That said too, having the right environment for your object is also a key point. For example, I have this nice little scene I have pre-prepared for myself, which is under my users folder, and I, ha I call it a set. So I'm going to pop my set in. It's going to take a moment to load, and it's actually already loaded in. It's just um, very, very tiny. So here we go. Here is our set. And I would like to point out that super handy, we're going to turn this off, is we can select our rock and press T and scale it up. And it is super, super heavy. That is the only problem because it is so many polygons, which I would like to point out if we do the command N plus B, we will see that we are made up of over control A, um, nine, nine, one million polygons to be exact. I'm not super good at reading those numbers. But 1 million polygons, pretty much, 999,000. That is a heavy, heavy scene. So I do recommend trying out the different LODs and the different normals. Once we boot this up, I am going to finish everything off by quickly mentioning one little trick that you can do. And here we go. This is just looking a little bit nicer that we have an actual decent scene. We don't need this plane anymore. This is my little kind of backdrop I have. We may change this background texture to be a little bit better of an HDRI. See for HDRIs, and I hop into the textures folder and just try different ones until you get decent looking lighting. That's good enough for me. I actually recommend lighting this yourself. Ooh, a nice little jungle overhead. There we go. I like that. That looks pretty cool. But um, what I recommend now that you can play around with is if you look in your image folder, we can take one of these LODs, and I actually really like LOD 0 or LOD 1, and dropping that on it, even though you technically aren't supposed to do it, there's no reason you can't do it, except for the fact that they just haven't designed it to it. It's a more intense normal that's designed for a lower resolution mesh, but I like to use this normal instead anyway, because it adds a little bit more definition to the object. It gives it a little bit more punch. So we have a bit more kind of going on in the scene now, and we have a little bit more detail on our object. And I have to say, I really like how this is looking. This is pretty, pretty good detail. Now, again, to finish everything off, we need to color correct. You can, you're not gonna have an image that looks like this out of Cinema 4D or Octane by default. You need to color correct this to get that type of contrast and type of um, real kind of bite to it. Not to mention, our rock is way too shiny, so I'd recommend changing this whole t material over from a glossy to a diffuse, and it fixes that right there. And this is basically the end of the tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. I did ramble a little bit off topic, so please leave a thumbs up if you like this tutorial, and leave a thumbs down if you thought I rambled a little off topic and didn't cover the topics that you wanted as quickly as you would have liked and I spent too much time talking about stuff that you really didn't really want to kind of listen to. But thank you guys again so much for watching and if you have any problems please leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.